Lisa Abbott has worked extensively as a session singer with the Stock and Aitken Production House, various other producers in pop music, television, and has appeared on hundreds of albums via singing, narration and composition for educational and children's releases and broadcasts. Damn, that was a mouthful. And that's what Discogs will tell you about Lisa. But this month, I got the opportunity to speak with her and she told me a little more about what we already know. Hi, I'm Stuart and this is Hardcore History. Every month, I take a look at the DJs, MCs and this month's singers of our happy hardcore past. Let's get it. It's still considered rude to ask a lady her age, right? From what I've been told, Lisa's age is an enigma. And that's the reason that in this episode, we start with a where and not a when. Lisa was born in Oxfordshire. And just after her 18th birthday, she followed her boyfriend to West Ham in London as they chose to study at college in Henley together. Not only did they study together, Lisa and her boyfriend also formed a band by the name of The Vale, and at local pubs played a lot of rock and folk covers. One gig Lisa remembers particularly well was at the Builder's Arms, a pub under the flyover in Stratford. It was a pretty rough pub at the time, something that became apparent when they read the flyer promoting their gig. It just read, Band Tonight, Girl Singer. It wasn't all dive bars that the Vale played at, with the music nights at the Tom Allen Centre in Stratford being the most notable of their gigs at the time. You see, through playing at the Tom Allen Centre, Lisa met a producer who did a lot of work for the BBC. Because Lisa could obviously sing and was also a fairly decent actress, this was the foot in the door she needed. She embarked on her professional career at the BBC, doing a lot of voiceover work and even sang the theme tunes of a couple of really bad children's TV shows. After Lisa had been working for the BBC for some time, she also started working for a company called Cassettes for Young People, with releases such as Children's Christmas Collection by the Lisa Abbott Singers. I also managed to find reference to some work for the Early Learning Centre, so I asked if she had a deep-rooted passion in children's entertainment. It wasn't really like that, but rather the door that opened even more doors, and as a result, she's amassed a huge catalogue of credits for thousands of recordings for kids. From what I hear though, the kids' tapes didn't exactly pay the kind of money that you write home about. In the mid-90s, Lisa secured a record deal with Max Hole's huge label, East West Records, as part of the pop band Darley. It was a very exciting time as they jetted off to Barcelona to film the video for their first single, Daylight. After the release of the single, there was a reshuffle at the label and Max left and has since gone on to become the chairman and CEO of Universal Music Group. His replacement wasn't really into Lisa's band. He didn't really get the music. After a couple more releases, they parted ways with East West and never released anything more as a group. At the time, Lisa's manager was Jerry Hempstead, one of the directors for Alpha Magic. He decided to bring her in and introduce her to a new crowd. The likes of Hixie, Dougal and Darren Styles were all there to meet the singer, as was Alchemist, who got the trophy of first happy hardcore release with Lisa Abbott. I can see clear. Over the years, Lisa has lent her songwriting and singing abilities to a range of electronic dance music. And in 1990, she released her first breakbeat house track called Talk To Me. As I mentioned previously, through the distributors Alpha Magic, she met Ronnie Varney, also known as The Alchemist. Some of the other happy hardcore producers that worked with Lisa early on were Fade and Banana Man, Force and Breeze. She's also the powerhouse vocals behind the huge Breeze and Styles anthems Let Me Fly and You're Shining, and particularly enjoys performing that one live when she gets the opportunity to. Speaking of You're Shining, she did tell me about a time she remembered when doing one of the Clubland Arena tours with Breeze and Styles. She was on stage at the Manchester MEN Arena and a film crew were there to record the event. During the big chorus of Your Shining, the ravers were so hyped up that they were throwing the glow sticks around and one hit Lisa in the eye. Apparently this was just a thing that happened through the tour and the trio had been dodging them all week. A true professional though, she carried on through the show and found her eye to be bulging four inches from her face and a huge black eye the next day. 
I found a few notable dance music releases outside of Happy Hardcore with another house track in 1997 called No Way Back with South London based Sunflower Records founder Dylan Barnes. Lisa also dabbled in Hard House and Trance and in 2004 had Cyan Unknown working with the vocals under their Cheeky Tracks alias and a track called Blow Me Away. The track was later picked up by Unit 3 Records in 2005. Breeze, Styles and Force all weighed in on the remix duties with this trance release which saw further releases under the label all around the world. I find the trance credits particularly interesting as while researching I found that Paul Hobbs and Lisa wrote a song called Beautiful Mind for Marcel Woods. It's also worth noting before we move on to some of the other stuff Lisa has achieved in her career that she sang on a Naughty DJ's track called Send Me an Angel. I went looking to see who Naughty DJ's is because I hadn't heard of the act. It led me to find that this was Scott Jenner, or as you guys in the Northeast will most certainly know him as, DJ Scott. Here's five other things I learned about Lisa Abbott this month. She has a vocal range of E2 to E5. She loves dogs and has a blind adopted chihuahua and another one crossed with a Macedonian mountain dog. Oh, and a turtle. She's always loved all kinds of music and her collection is very eclectic. She wasn't really a raver herself and didn't go out much in her 20s as she had the record deal. She doesn't like having a photo taken, which explains why there are not many on the internet. Bit of a shorter video this time because the next two are going to be packed out and if you want to know who we're doing next time, stick around to the end when I'll let you know. Since the start of her musical journey, we've seen Lisa Rabbit at a variety of gigs, from her early local pubs to working with the BBC. By now, her phone contact list must have been huge, and her work in the dance music scene only expanded on it. Possibly thanks to her earlier work with Max Hole and East West Records, Lisa landed a retainer gig for the huge 90s pop production house Stock and Aitken. Her job was to fix vocals that weren't up to scratch on some of the crappier power pop that was known for being mass produced at the time. She would receive calls to book her to come into the studio for a session because at the time, the technology wasn't there to fix vocal tracks like they are today, so you had to sing it right in the first place. This opportunity was a huge learning curve for Lisa, but allowed her the chance to hone her craft and I got the impression that it was a very regular occurrence to get called in during that time. Why they didn't just produce some tracks with Lisa in the first place is a question that I just cannot answer. Give a clue, Mike. Not only was she a ghost singer for some lesser talented artists, but Lisa also got to meet and work with a lot of interesting people. Some of those include Beverly Craven, as she gave backing vocals to three tracks on the 1999 album Mixed Emotions and regularly provided backing vocals for Italian singer Laura Pausini in the early 2000s. More recently, we find Lisa extending her catalogue of credits to film and TV, and through working with her husband, the musical score composer Jim Williams, her voice has been heard on award-winning films. A few of those credits I found were in the original soundtrack for Ben Wheatley's 2011 film Kill List, also the 2016 French film Raw, and winner of the Palme d'Or at the Cannes Film Festival, Titan. On TV, she's worked on the music for shows such as Hotel Babylon, Bodies, and wrote the theme song for the popular series Coast. Lisa has also gained opportunities to use her acting skills as she featured in the musical theatre production of Made in Dagenham, playing the part of Beryl, who apparently is Rita O'Grady's sweary friend. The stage is somewhere that the singer has had to become accustomed to of late with her Hounds of Love project. It started when Lisa's husband suggested to her that if he couldn't see the singer and didn't know better, he could almost mistake her for Kate Bush. He even went as far as to suggest that she put on a show singing Bush's songs. Lisa didn't think she'd be able to pull off such a feat, and choosing what is considered to be Kate Bush's finest achievement in songwriting, Hounds of Love, she approached longtime friend and member of the Brighton Beach Boys, Steve Wrigley, to ask for his opinion. Steve's credentials extend to creating live performances of albums from legends of the past, 
such as David Bowie and the Beatles, and all he had to say on Lisa's idea was no problem. They got to work and built a 10 piece lineup consisting of members of Stomp's Lost and Found Orchestra, the Brighton Beach Boys, and Rose Divine and the DeVilles. Remember that last one, it'll become important in a few minutes. The collective CVs of these artists include working with Oasis, James, the Oyster Band, and the Divine Comedy. And in homage to Kate, they recreate the album totally live as closely as possible. It's obviously gone down a treat too, as it was only originally planned for two nights but the group have since played at various venues also lisa did admit to me that the show doesn't make a great deal of money and she considers it more a passion project as she's a huge kate bush fan she's even roped her husband jim into playing in the band to this day and since 2012, Lisa has had a regular gig that she really enjoys. It's one that suits her talents and allows her to express herself through her voice in ways that she possibly didn't get to in some of the other paths she's led. Featuring a classic lineup of guitar, bass, drums, singer, and a fiddle, writing and playing spit kicking country blues, Lisa is the front woman of the Brighton bass band Rose Divine and the DeVilles. Gigging at local venues, the band's repertoire comes from old school favourites such as the Carter family, K-Star, Linda Ronstadt and Emmy Lou Harris. In addition to this, they create fresh takes on Kirsty McCall, The Proclaimers and Slade. As far as you could get away from the dance music we know her best for, being part of this band allows her to follow one of her great passions and sing music that's really suited to her voice. So that's it, we got to the end of episode 10. Thank you so much for tuning in and I hope you learned something about Lisa Rabbit too. Would love it if you hit that subscribe button and if you're new here, go check out my other videos. I've got nine more hardcore histories and there's 10 DJ mixes there. No there's not Stu, there's nine because you wrote that Pacific Sun bootleg, remember? Next month it's a guy that we've talked a lot about here on Hardcore History. Get ready, because I'm doing recon next. See you next time.